fella right here is an old, old trumpet show. I'm not too sure if there's a slug in it. Yep, there is. Whoa! <laughs> Look at the size of this! It's huge! Huge big trumpet shell with a healthy slug in there. Never take any shells with slugs in it. We'll put this guy straight back. You are beautiful. Look at him. Whoa. Massive. Massive. Sorry, buddy. There you go. Tide pools like this one house some of the most beautiful and amazing creatures. But on the other side, there's a dark side. There's the most dangerous, venomous sea creatures known to man. Got a little peek under here. What are the cone shells? It's a cone shell. You don't want to mess with those guys. You do not want to mess with those. They are very, very venomous. No, I'm not gonna. The most venomous shell fish in the ocean, so we don't want to get shot by one of them darts out here. We're spending the next three days out along the remote coast exploring the lowest tides of the year. Be very gentle, beautiful starfish. You should never really take starfishes out of water. Absolutely amazing. I'll put him back. There you go, fella. Have you seen this flapping here? There's a fish high and dry. How did that happen? Did you go, buddy? It just like jumped out or something. <laughs> so we've just seen an eel in here. He's hidden away a bit, but I'll try and get him up by luring him like this. Imagine getting bitten by that, Jacko. Oh, 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 imagine oh, oh, oh. getting bitten by that. Here he comes again. Oh, it's so sick. They can be fast too, so I've got to watch out. Look. Head, he's been attacked. He's been attacked. Never, ever, ever had something like that happen before. The tide is the biggest killer around here, so I do expect to bump into a couple of animals. Hopefully, we can help them out. Oh, straight up. I'm exploring three different ecosystems the coastal plains, which is where I am right now, the open ocean side, where the deeper water pushes in closer and the tide pools are a little bit more clear and a little bit more deep. The mangrove forest, one of the most barren, remote, harsh places, home of the sea snake, the stonefish, and a whole lot of other crazy venomous creatures. We found a popper fish. Puffed up, I think he's alive. Is he alive? He's alive. He's in defense mode. Are you all right, buddy? Oh, oh, oh. what's he done? I don't know if he's stuck puffed up, but what happens is these tide pools can get pretty gnarly. It's animal versus animal. So an octopus or a bigger fish or something has just had a crack at him and he's gone as a self-defense technique. And he's wedged himself in there between two seaweeds to stabilize himself. And I'm guessing he's gonna be fine. He's on his way to the deflate and living his best life. Like I was saying, octopus. This guy would have just got in the blue with that puffer fish for sure. He's actually, he's fired up. Maybe the puffer fish was trying to have a crack at him. <laughs> oh, he's off. That is so beautiful. Hey, little fella. Oh, oh he's gone. He's gone. That was cool. Oh. <laughs> he's trying to leave it. <laughs> he's trying to <laughs> round it up. Strider's rounded up the tusky for us. Spooked it up on a bank. Nice work, Strider. It's beautiful. Here you go, fella. I bet you guys want to know exactly what kind of sea creature lives in this mysterious dark hole. Well, we go fishing for it and we catch whatever beastie lives in there. Woo! This guy right here being one of the more friendly guys around here. G'day, mate. My name's Brody. Also, it's a big battlefield around here. Creature versus creature in the tide pools over food, mating, and all that other stuff. This fella right here is actually venomous. Ooh, and this cool. eel is angry. They were blue in then. I don't know whether that was attacking that or that was attacking this. I think this fish was actually attacking the eel and the eel was fighting back because these guys, oh. look, yep. Oh! oh. What the hell? Yeah, that eel was strong. Oh, he's... I don't know what the hell is going on. That eel is off its chops. I actually figured out what I think is going on. Is this eel wasn't actually attacking the fish. It was reacting to the fish's venom. That's why this started acting crazy. I know this seems a little bit gnarly, but it is nature at its rawest. Let's go find that fish and check him out. This is him here. This fella here. To a human, it won't kill me, but to any sea creature around here, lights out. He's got battle scars all over his head though, for where that eel's fought back as it was passing on. Man, I can't believe we got that on film. We just happened to see the splashing underneath the rock and lift it up and it was on. A little bit of rubbish. A lure. No hooks on it. But we might reuse that. 
just like that the tide is rushing back in so we're gonna head back to camp I got a little bit of time on my hands this afternoon it's gonna to explain to you basically in a nutshell my understanding of how the tide works so it works in the gravitational pull of the moon and the Sun but mainly the moon so we have the earth and we have the moon and the Sun's not really involved in this at the moment this represents the ocean the moon pulls the ocean this way and it also pulls the earth a little bit so counteracting on this side high tide here and a smaller high tide there and then because it shrinks like that it's low tide here and low tide there and obviously as this guy moves around this shifts introduce the Sun and when it's lined up like this this part here becomes a lot bigger and that becomes a lot smaller on the sides and that's what give us our spring tides or our low tides and it is extra spicy this time so we're gonna search these dead lows right here I'll see you guys down around on the open ocean tide pools first thing tomorrow morning we're getting stuck straight back in it on the second lowest tide and then after that we're going down to the mangrove ecosystem for the lowest tide of the year and oh my god there should be some crazy stuff down there Another bloody beautiful morning. We're more on the ocean side. It's deeper water off the coast here and all these tide pools are a little bit cleaner, a little bit more beautiful. And Jackson and I are just gonna go exploring through all this area here. It is about an hour away from the dead low and a lot of this stuff exposed isn't normally exposed. So we'll see what we can find, eh Strider? It's very important to make sure you step on all the dead rock and not any live coral when you're out here. First find is this beautiful blue starfish. Absolutely beautiful. Won't disturb him too much. Try not to handle anything if you, if you don't have to. I just wanted to show you guys so you guys can see what it's like. But be careful what you pick up out here. There's a live clam there. It's fully exposed. Strider's going for a little further investigation into this tide pool. Right, Strider? Oh. <laughs> it's a big one. Oh, there's an oki in here. Oh, he's sucking under my finger. He's huge. I don't know how he's in there. I'm looking for one creature more than the rest and that is the blue ring octopus. It is pretty much the deadliest creature in the sea. Uh, I just caught myself an octopus friend <laughs> and he gave me some fresh ink. He's an absolutely beautiful fellow. We're not going to hurt him in any way. They're actually really inquisitive. Sometimes when you just be a little bit persistent, they'll come out and hang out with you. Oh, he's inked up. Oh, look at him. So for those that you don't know, the ink is obviously a decoy so they can slip away. They're a master of camouflage. They're actually the coolest bloody creatures. So this is the thing that sometimes they get too friendly. Let go, mate. He won't let go of me. Coming up to say g'day to you guys. How awesome is that? So he's changed his camouflage pattern, the color, the texture to suit the ground around him there. Look at the ribs on his back there. How sick is that? What they're doing in these tide pools, they're so smart, all the little prawns and fish and crustaceans just get trapped in here. And these guys just dominate around here. They just grab everything. I'll grab him and put him back where we found him. It's the dead hide right now. And there are literally hundreds of reef sharks just coming into the shore. They're schooling up and I'm out there. Let's see what's going on. The drone's up in the air. This is gonna be wild. Righto, wish me luck, let's go. I'm surrounded by sharks right now. I can't really see much under the water. It's dirty under the water than above. They're coming in, they're checking me out, they're zooming around. I bloody love this so much. This is amazing. Woo! This spot where I am right now is where we're all walking at the low tide. The tide's obviously pushed in, and in a few hours we'll push back out and we can explore again. And we were actually out another 500 or more meters out that way so these huge tides are amazing and all the sharks are coming in to get everything and clean up everything that's been left to rot or have died over on those dead low tides 
Jack and I are just racing the sunset to the mangrove coastline. We want to get there just before it goes down. I want to drone up in the air. We're basically just going to roll the swags out wherever we end up. And tomorrow morning is the lowest tide of the year, which is what we're doing this all for. We're super excited about it. On the dead lows down there in the mangrove ecosystem, it can be really crazy. A lot of animals like sea turtles, stingrays, and all that sort of stuff actually go high and dry. Hopefully none of that's happening, but you never know. We'll get down there and see what's going on. So this fella here is the stonefish. They are a venomous fish, but around the fish, everything's pretty safe, except there's these spines that run along its back and they come up like needles and they can inject some nasty stuff into you. It's not likely that you will die. Oh, sorry buddy, I'll let you go. That's his mouth there, a grumpy. There's not many recorded cases of people actually dying from the stonefish. It's pretty easy to get aid and all that sort of stuff. But if you're out in remote, there just is that chance. So just please be careful, wear your booties. Don't do what I'm doing and uh, keep your eyes out for these guys. Good bloody morning everyone. First light, that sun's just creeping up. That tide is draining out. It's already super low. We've got a whole day ahead of us. It's super exciting. This is what we're out here for. As you can see behind me, the mudflat plains just stretch for miles and miles. And on these spring tides, there's only one high, high tide. And what happens is turtles, stingrays, and other animals, they go up it, finding food, finding mates or whatever, and they misjudge the tide. And they get stuck high and dry on these banks. And the tides won't return to that depth for a long, long, long time. And that deadly combination of tides not returning and the hot, hot summer sun, most animals do not last more than a few days around here. So we've got our eyes open to see if we can find any turtles or anything laying around because more often than not, on these spring low tides, we do find turtles high and dry. <laughs> if this was a high tide right now, the water would be two body lengths over the top of us. We'd be right underwater. That's what makes this amazing. It's basically one big tide pool on these dead low tides out here. So Jackson would be completely underwater right now. On the lowest of lows, live coral actually gets exposed to the sunlight. Little sea snake doing his thing. He's caught in the rip here, so what he's trying to do, he's trying to find a place to anchor his head in a hole or a crevice. Basically, like what I said, to use as an anchor so he can reserve some energy for when the tide's slack and he can go hunting. There we go. See that? He's locked himself in. He's gonna hang there until the tide goes slack so he can continue on his little life. Have you ever seen an orange chopper shell before? <laughs> There's a crab in there. Look. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> That's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Here's a flounder. <laughs> Hello, buddy. This fella right here, a lot of these are familiar with what flounders are. They're the ugliest looking fish in the thing. They've got these funny little eyes on top there, and they basically use camouflage to hunt. This guy here will bury himself just below the sand there, just so his eyes and his mouth are out of the water, and boom, bang! Whenever a prawn or anything comes over, he'll grab him. But I'll put him back in his little den there. There you go, buddy. Off you go. <laughs> oh, oh he, no, he, he's, buried, he's buried himself. Got him. Got him. Righto. This right here is a shabado shark. I'm not going to hurt him anyway. I'm just going to bring him out of the water real quick to show you guys exactly what they are. Then I'll put him away. Ooh. See his mouth under there? They're a grazer. They go along. Nom, 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 eat all the fish up. Not hurting him. They can live out of the water for a little bit because they do spend their times up high and dry like this, just filtering around. I just want to show you guys, and I'll, uh, I'll let him go just up here so you can see him. Ready? There you go. See you, buddy. <laughs> oh, straight up! Hey! <laughs> straight up! Straight up! Leave it. <laughs> Whoa! Right here, we have a big, angry female mud crab, and she'll be waiting here for a male. You can tell it's a female by the big, rounded back there. Keep moving on. It's nice to meet you. Whoa! All righto. Cheers. You know you're in the barren mud flats when there's a bloody tumbleweed coming at ya. I'm gonna jump it. Australia! That was like something off the movies. Have a go at it. It's literally just a dark, big, deep black hole in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> They're only exposed on the lowest of tides, and that's why we're down here. Got a little hand line, sinker, hook, and a little prawn on there, their favorite food. Oh. You snagged. 
took the bait, whatever's down there. <laughs> Round two, I've taken the sinker off because I want to feel the little nibbles. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oh, there's something down there, Jacko. I definitely got a hit then. Jackson and I used to do this all the time when we're grums. That's how we know there's stargazers around here when there's not meant to be. We've caught a few before. The thing is, is they're super timid. So you only really have one chance at getting them. And if you lose them like what I just did, it's rare for them to go back again. Because like I said, they're a nocturnal creature and they're very, very shy. I think I've spooked this guy. We will come back and check this burrow a little bit later, but there are hundreds and hundreds of burrows all along this place here. And we've got to check them now while the tide's the lowest. Oi, something's touching it. Someone's touching it. Yep, 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 yep. I'm on, Jack. I'm on. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on. It's gonna be gentle. Uh, oh, he's big. Is he? Yeah. Oh, this is where the battle begins. Can you see him? Yeah. Here he comes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is him right here, guys. This is the blotched jawfish. It's not a stargazer. It's very similar, but look how big his gob is there. We've got barbless hooks, so we're not trying to hurt him or any way. I just wanted to show you guys what it is. <laughs> I can't believe we got one, Jacko. What a bloody awesome little fish. The blotched jawfish. <laughs> we got one. It's really cool because they make a little garden at the front of their burrow. They're all individual. They collect all these shells and they place them in the spots they want them to lure in, hopefully, a mate. Oh, yeah, I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> it's quite a big one of these guys, the blotched jawfish. They can breathe out of the water a little bit longer than normal fish because they do hunt these mud plains at night. But uh, we'll get him back in his burrow. You want to go back in? <laughs> <laughs> Found a little hairy crab here. It's pretty obvious what he does. He uses camouflage and he hides in the rocks and in the rock pools and eats all the little mollusks, little prawns and stuff like that. Here you go, buddy. Don't know where he was off to. Found a turtle, he's high and dry. I'm just gonna check. Oh, no, nah. he's, he's definitely not alive. Oh, no. Nah. So this is what the tides do. They do kill. This turtle, unfortunately, didn't get a second chance. We weren't here quick enough. It's been here for a few days. It's really dried out, starting to stink. A huge loggerhead too. It's just got stuck here. Couldn't get back. Didn't have enough energy to turn around. And that's why we do what we do. Rest easy, big girl. So we've got about an hour or two left of the tide before it goes to the dead low and it is absolutely rushing out of all the systems. So there's not too many places that all the animals and sea creatures can go but in this little feeder here. So we're going to follow it up and see what we can sort of find. <laughs> oh, poor fella. This fella here has just misread the tides. Come around, we'll come around the side of it. So we don't him. This fella is absolutely bloody exhausted. His shell's super dry and the tide's still dropping. So he's probably gonna be here for another eight hours. So give him a quick boost to near the bank there so he can swim out. Here you go, fella. It's all right. It's okay. Just be super gentle with him. Yes, I know. I know you <laughs> want to go swimming. <laughs> we got you. I'm just gonna put you on the bank here, buddy. There you go, mate. Here you go. How's that? That's a bit easier, huh? You're almost there. <laughs> oh, poor fella. He's actually so much more exhausted than what we first thought. We've been sitting here for at least half an hour now, waiting for him just to make it that extra feet into the water. But we can't rush him. He's got to do it in his own time. Oh, he's looking at you, Jacko. <laughs> oh, he's saying thank you. But let me take my time, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> he's looking right at you. Oh, so close, buddy. Oh he's, oh, he's touching the water. I bet that feels good. Look, he's like, oh, yes. Yes, buddy. Go. He's going to be cruising once he gets in yeah, that rip. Yeah, look at him. Oh, he's got the fin up. Yes, go, mate. What? Look at the sea snake. Where? <laughs> right there. Well, that's where I was. <laughs> It's your footprints. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I must have been almost sitting on this. <laughs> There's a sea snake right here. I was literally just sitting here. I didn't see it, I almost sat on it. This is one of the most venomous snakes in the world, but they're pretty docile. They've got a really small mouth, these guys, so it's really hard for them to bite and inject the venom. Don't mistake it for the big ones, the big ones can. There's so much happening on these spring tides, it's insane. This fella is a lot more exhausted than what we thought, so we're gonna leave him here to do his thing in his own time. He is safe from the tides here, they won't get him, so good luck on the rest of your journey, mate, and uh, have a bloody good one. The tides have come and gone, which brings us to the end of the episode, guys. Get your merch, youngbloods.co, maybe a few cheeky Christmas presents in there, and I'll see you in a couple of days. That's a bloody wrap, baby! Eww!